In my latest short video, I went through how you can add some drama to your photos by using masks. This time we're going to take a look at masks in a bit more detail, to show you how you can edit your photos more effectively. Let's get right into it. I've gone ahead and imported a few photos to show you how you can use masks on, on these examples. So right away I can see that this photo needs some adjustment to the sky. So if I go to the develop tab, I can go to masks. And right here you can see that there are three options to choose different, different parts of your photo. Now, um, these are AI masks, so um, Lightroom enables you to, to select either a subject, the sky or background, and it uses an algorithm um, which, which selects whatever is in the photo according to what you choose to select right here. Now I'm going to go right ahead and select sky, and as you can see, Lightroom does a pretty good job at selecting your sky. Now, right here I can go ahead and start some adjustments, And as you can see, you can do some really nice changes to the sky alone. Now if I try to create a new mask and select the subject this time round, you can see that it immediately chooses the castle. Now, once again, if I do some changes to the castle right here, I can increase some contrast, increase some saturation, maybe change the temperature and tint a bit. And as you can see, there's a really nice difference there. So that's the basic way you can use masks, similar to what I showed in, in my short video. However, if we go to another photo and go to masking, the masking tab offers other options. So, for example, you can select subject, sky and background, as I said before. Then you can choose objects in your photo. So if you click this, there will be a selection to choose different subjects, different objects in your photo. So if I click it, I can go ahead and circle this part. And as you can see, Lightroom will go ahead and choose that selection that I made. Let's go right ahead and delete this. So I can continue showing which other options are available. Now, there's also the brush. The brush is literally just a brush, so whatever you paint on will be chosen. There are some adjustments for feather, flow and density. So if you increase the flow and put it to 100%, as you can see, that selection is highlighted much more. If I decrease that flow, say to 50%, as you can see, it's a bit more faint. The selection is a bit more faint. Now, let's reset the photo once again. There are linear gradients, which as you can see, enable you to put a linear gradient, but with some, with some feathering. So right here, the feather will apply the adjustments gradually. Once again, there are radial gradients, again with feathers. You can adjust this feather accordingly. You can adjust the feather accordingly. You can even go without a feather and you can go with feather. It's, the adjustment is right here, as you can see. So once again, the adjustment will be done gradually if you're using a feather. And there is a range. Now we'll go through what color range and luminance do shortly. So let's go ahead and try a linear gradient. So a linear gradient, as I said, will, will put a linear um, sort of feather feathering to your, to your selection. And now I can intersect this selection with a color range, for example. So I can say that I want only the grays and the whites selected. And as you can see, there's an intersection between what I chose before versus what I selected as a color. Let's choose the dark areas. As you can see, Lightroom first chooses all the parts 
of the photo which have that that color and then adjusts according to the previous mask that I've made. Now, if I choose to do some changes to this area, as you can see, I can do changes to the shadows only because I chose the gray color. However, if I delete this mask and start over and do a similar thing, but this time round, I can do a luminance range. I can even select the dark areas by selecting a range of luminance. So, for example, if I want the dark areas, I would pick this part of the range um, slider and I would decrease it to only have a selection of the darker areas. If I move it across to the brighter areas, as you can see, the selection moves towards the brighter areas. And once you move it, you can see that the selection is adjusted accordingly. Now, let's go ahead and select the darker areas again. Here we go. So, as you can see, this can create some drama in your photos. So, let's see how you can use the intersect tool but to refine your selections. So for example, if I click on select sky, you can see that the sky selection is done pretty well. However, if you zoom in a bit, you can see that there is a slight spillover onto the Kelpies right here. So as you can see, there's a slight spillover and it won't, it won't do uh, the adjustments correctly on the sky alone. Now, if I want to intersect the area with the subject, I can click on Intersect Mask with Select Subject and Lightroom will select my subject. However, I intersected the sky with the subject, so the, only the subject is selected at the moment. But if I invert the selection, as you can see, the area that I selected is now much cleaner. So the, the selection is now much, much cleaner. So if I make some adjustments to the selected area which has been inverted right now, you can see that the, the adjustments are happening only on that refined selection. This is more of a hack rather than a tip because the selection of the sky by Lightroom doesn't always do a perfect job at doing a, a refined selection. So when you intersect it with the subject, and then invert your mask, it will create a much, much more clean selection of what you're trying to do. So let's go ahead and reset this photo. And I'm going to give you a small example of how to edit a photo by using masks in different ways to make, to create a better looking, a better looking scene. So let's go ahead and select the sky. Now, as you can see, Lightroom did a pretty good job at selecting the sky, only just um, highlighting a bit of the, the background right here, but that doesn't bother me much. So let's reduce a bit of exposure, reduce the highlights. So we put some drama in the, in the lighter areas of the photo. Can increase the contrast by a bit. Now. Okay, so I'm going to create a new mask to select the subject and Lightroom has chosen the castle plus a bit of this background right here, which I'm not interested in editing at this moment. So I'm going to click on the subject right here and click subtract and this will give me an option to subtract anything I wish to subtract. So I'm going to choose brush and with the brush tool, I can now remove this selection. Let's go back to fit and now I can do some adjustments to my subject and as you can see the subject is getting edited accordingly. Now, here we go, okay. Now I'm going to create a new mask, this time I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm going to select the foreground which leads directly to the castle. And this time I'm going to reduce exposure by a bit. I'm going to also 
reduce clarity and texture. So by reducing clarity and texture, there will be literally no sharpness in the foreground, which would immediately direct my eyes onto the subject of this photo. So I'm going to also decrease the shadows by a bit, not too much, and decrease the whites by a bit. Now, if we look at the before and after, you can see that immediately the difference in these two photos is the fact that the sky is much better um, exposed and the subject is better lit. And as you can see, your eyes immediately go towards the subject using the masks that we did. So I hope these tips and tricks are useful for you to edit your photos in a more efficient way. And please make sure to like and subscribe to see more of these videos. Thank you.